This is part two of altered skin integrity and integumentary uh, disorders. So we were on atopic dermatitis, uh, often referred to as eczema. This, it's itchy, red, dry skin. And kids are not good about not scratching. If it itches, they scratch and then they add germs in and get infection. Um, so this is related to allergies. So finding what triggers it for the child and avoiding it. Often it's um, things that come in contact with the skin. So soaps, detergents, uh, perfumes, powders, anything like that. These are the kids who need the hypoallergenic diapers, diaper wipes, detergents. Uh, one of the problems is the skin gets really dry so we want a good moisturizing lotion on it. And this does have a strong correlation both to allergies and to asthma. Um, atopic dermatitis, allergies and asthma are kind of a trio that go together. Hypersensitivity reactions. These are allergies, right? So a hypersensitivity reaction is an inflammatory reaction of the skin to an exposure or a local uh, noxious agent, so something like a bee sting. Or it can be the result of a systemic reaction to an allergen. You know, this would be your allergy to um, amoxicillin and you develop a rash. So it's, it shows in the skin. It can be either local from something like a bee sting or everywhere. Um, this can be acute or chronic. Uh, chronic being like atopic dermatitis or, you know, acute as you got the bee sting just right now. Um, erythema multiform. Uh, this is acute and self-limiting. It often recur occurs in response to a viral or bacterial infection, but can also be a food or drug uh, reaction. Um, Steven Johnson's, this is a reaction of the skin, but this is one of the most severe allergic reactions you can have. It's super rare, but um, medications that have a Steven Johnson's reaction um, listed, if somebody says they're allergic to it, we want to be really careful to not give it because basically all the skin sloughs off, and that includes... Um, you know, down into your airway and into your gut. So these kids are in the ICU, do poorly, and some of them don't survive. So here's a picture of just all that skin sloughing off. And you can see she's needing to be ventilated um, because her lungs are just as raw and awful um, inside. So nursing assessment for urticaria, which is hives, right? Lots of Foods and medications cause hives. Um, so we want to get a good history. Have there been new foods? Have there been new medications? Has there been something unusual, a change in the environment, um, an infection, something going on? Uh, we want to inspect the skin for those raised uh, edematous hives. Um, they can also be in the mucous membranes and assess the airway and breathing. Um, as hypersensitivity can affect respiratory status. They may get hives on the skin. What kind of swelling is happening in the airway? So things that cause hives, food allergies, drugs, animal stings, um, in certain infections, environmental stimuli like breathing, paint fumes or something, um, and stress. Some people get hives just as a stress reaction. So moving on to acne, uh, acne usually is classified mild, moderate, or severe, um, and treatment is going to be based on that, right? Just some of the comedones, your white and blackheads uh, are mild. Um, when you start really having papules and pustules, we'll call that moderate. And then um, cysts are the big red, really sore ones, and that's when somebody has severe acne. And here's just kind of a picture of what happens. Uh, in adolescence, these sebaceous glands become active and that's what gets, um, just contributes to getting this all plugged up and then germs, surface skin germs get down here and pretty soon you have this big inflamed um, 
cyst, very painful. Um, so uh, we earlier I talked about acne medicine, so I won't go over that again. So sunburn, our goal is to prevent it. So encourage everyone over six months to use sunscreen. Avoid sun during the, the most intense time, which is 10 to 2. Uh, teach teens about the hazards of ultraviolet light, right? It does damage to the skin. You're going to look old before your time. Um, discourage tanning on tanning beds. And when you do get a sunburn, um, cool compresses feel good. Aloe vera gel, things that cool it, um, feel really good. NSAIDs for the pain can help. Things that are hot make it feel bad. So hot showers and hot baths will make it feel worse. You shouldn't do them. Clothing rubbing on it hurts. So loose clothing and over time that skin will peel off. We don't want people peeling the skin because the problem is when you're peeling it, it may not stop and you damage um, good skin as you pull off that bad skin. So animal bites, here's another problem with um, skin, right? So how do we prevent kids from getting animal bites? Well, we've got to teach them not to provoke dogs or to tease or really rough house with dogs. Um, be sure you ask the adult who knows the pet before you interact with their dog or cat or, or other animal. Um, cats are a problem because kids tend to grab them and pull and then cats will bite them um, because their tail's getting pulled or, or their ears are getting pulled, things like that. Uh, when an animal is eating, sleeping, or a mother is nursing pups, that is not the time to interrupt them. High-pitched talking and screaming can startle and frighten the animals and make them think you're attacking and so they attack you. Uh, you want to display as closed fist um, to let the dog sniff it, so you know, kind of give them your your hand. Um, ferrets, keep them away from the face. I don't think we're allowed to have ferrets in California, but if you do, um, don't let them up in your face. And if a cat hisses or kind of reaches out with its paw, leave it alone. So all of those. Animal bites are prone to infection. So if you do get a bite that breaks the skin, um, it should be seen by the a provider. So insect and spider bites. Anything that breaks the skin, the best thing to do is wash with soap and water. Mild soap and water first. And um, then if there's a stinger in there, get that off. Scrape it off with a fingernail or a credit card works really well because you can kind of get down below it and pull it off. Uh, I've heard people with bees say, oh, don't squeeze the stinger because it's got a little pouch there with the, the toxin in it. But the longer it's in the skin, the more it gives. So you've got to get it off. So even if that means you've got to squeeze it to pull it off with your fingernails, you got to get it off. Um, apply ice. That mostly helps for comfort, but it also um, keeps the swelling down. And then uh, diphenhydramine, which is Benadryl. Um, stop that inflammatory reaction and then monitor for breathing and continue watching the site.